Today, folks, are we overlooking the cliff's edge of what could be an AI software bubble? Or are we seeing the greatest technology ever be invented coming into fruition, taking us to the damn moon, printing those beautiful tendies as we diamond hand our way to an early retirement? Something tells me we're stuck somewhere in between is this week I continue to buy VDY, my dividend ETFs that are actually outpacing the S&P this week as I look for a place of more stability, less insanity as we review again these top software stocks, take a look at my portfolio and just see where the market sit this week. And if that is a conversation you'd appreciate on your path to financial independence, the damn well one day retire early subscribe, hit that like button because I want to share with you. And I'm sure you've heard this voice floating around. And I, I, this is like the start of software innovation to me, but just take a listen reported their earnings today. Shopify led the charge with shares leaping 22% so like right? after Let's significant listen, the right? stock market went out of control today. Okay. Growth stocks are up between 10 to 20. So this is that AI voice that I've been hearing everywhere. And I found the software that actually fast tracks making these videos, which is kind of mind blowing. Like, let's just take a recent article from CNBC here on oil, right? Like why oil is spiking, geopolitical events. If we copy this article and we use say Gemini and you just say, hey, summarize the following just so we can get like a quick script. This is literally what people are doing. So here we go. We've got a nice little summary here. If we take this summary, it's like four paragraphs. There's a platform called Pictori. Pictori is this crazy AI software where if I just go in, I can do script editor where I just paste my script in like that. And then if I move my head out of the way here and we actually scroll up to the top where we hit proceed, we can actually get an entire AI generated video in literally less than a minute. Watch how fast this just kind of comes out here. A few moments later. And boom, just like that, we have an entire AI generated video. Now we gotta add the audio, which is funny because this is where when we go into the voiceovers, you can hear this very familiar voice. Allow the world to live as it. <laughs> so if we just generate and apply it, it's gonna apply it to the scenes that it added in here. And the cool thing is, is you can add in anything you want. You can add in your own videos, your own pictures, but I wanna zoom my head out of the way because it adds even the audio in the background and you can choose whether you want it to be landscape or portrait for like TikTok or like YouTube shorts. But let's just take a quick preview here and just like listen to this this was all generated literally just within those oil prices minutes. surged this week due to heightened geopolitical tensions in the middle east president biden's comments about a potential israeli strike on iranian crude facilities How contributed to the price increase goldman sachs predicts a significant spike in oil prices if iran's oil production is disrupted by an attack the extent of the price increase will depend on whether OPEC can- You get the idea. I just made a one minute clip in literally like less than a minute. It's kind of crazy to me that this is what AI is enabling. If you want to test out Pictori, I'm going to leave the link down in the description below that'll actually give you like a 20% discount, I believe. Um, and it supports the channel because I'm trying to partner with some of these AI softwares because they just blow my mind. Uh, and it's something that I'm definitely going to be implementing in my own marketing techniques, but you guys got to come check this out. Again, you can add your own visuals, do whatever you want, but it does all the heavy lifting. Lifting. There's no point to putting any real effort into it. So when I look at AI software, I get where the value is being created. But the problem is, is can the growth justify the current valuations? Because like the crypto bubble, like, you know, the MJ market bubble, there's always another bubble around the corner. And I still think that's where we're currently sitting in is relatively overvalued areas where I'm trying to pick up value in the discounted pile, which is mostly the dividend stocks that have been wrecked by higher interest rates. As many of you know, I have been, you know, aggressively buying my three fund strategy here. I'm glad I sold DRN, my triple leveraged uh, REIT ETF, because it's now been underperforming after going on a, an epic run. Um, you got to be a little bit cautious and careful because there's just a lot of volatility between all these sectors right now. So again, this is why I'm so ETF focused because it, it offers a lot more stability. And as mentioned, VDY has actually crushed it this week. It's up 1.35% against SCHD and VOO that are flat. Over the last month, however, uh, SCHD uh, has been the, the biggest lackluster performer against VDY and the S&P. And I think that might be related to the energy sector uh, because obviously VDY is so energy specific. And if we take a look um, at the performance uh, basically over the last week of the S&P, energy is up a lot, which is surprising because even on the Canadian side of the border, oil is up a lot. It's been primarily what's been driving the TSX performance and likely VDY's performance. But we also got some big movement in Manulife and some of the insurer plays out there mixed with the banks. But oil did not bump up that much on these geopolitical events, was which was a bit shocking to me. And I don't know if this is like a slow roll into seeing the effects of, you know, oil start getting disrupted and oil prices going up because we are at 
at all time high oil demand in the market right now. However, again, with the US and many other countries obviously trying to deal with inflation, bringing oil prices down, I don't know if this has a lot to do with, you know, our own countries producing more oil or why in the backdrop of like these horrific geopolitical events, oil just isn't up that much. But we can definitely see the oil stocks taking effect by the geopolitical events. So putting that stuff aside, the software companies that I'm most paying attention to, we're gonna look at Tesla, Palantir, Constellation Software, Shopify, Adobe, Oracle, uh, and a couple other just to give you kind of a scope on why I've never been able to wrap my head around um, exactly what's going on here right now. And I think we're still in somewhat of a bubble. Now, Tesla hasn't been able to do anything uh, basically for the last five years. And that's because they keep telling us that they're a software company, they're a robotics company, but we actually haven't seen any value of that software come into fruition. They've been missing ungodly EPS misses because of their lack of car sales, which they keep telling us is going to turn around as we head into the RoboTaxi event October 10th. But at the end of the day, like they need to start justifying revenue here, right? Like we've been flatlining now for quite some time. And it is quite concerning, right? And I know that we're probably going to continue to hear about, obviously, the energy generation or energy storage and solar panels, but I don't think that's the real value creation, right? It's going to be in software like we're seeing currently with Palantir. Palantir continues to hit uh, record highs, uh, which is absolutely insane at the value it trades at 88 billion, 233 times multiple on a company that is only just starting to pick steam back up and is going to require absolute perfection in its earnings. But as we talked with the hardware side like NVIDIA, perfection sometimes doesn't always matter if there's just been so much buying and everything starts getting overbought. I'm obviously thinking that we're well into overbought territory with Palantir unless they absolutely clobber this quarterly earnings. But you know, at a 27% revenue growth, it just doesn't get me that excited when it's trading at the same value of Constellation Software. And Constellation already trades at a wicked premium. Like it is a very expensive company, but it's doing like four times the revenue of that of Palantir, right? So, I mean, this is like the valuation mix that I have a hard time wrapping my head around because Shopify, uh, Constellation Software, these are more like Canadian oriented software companies, but they always run into like crazy bubbles for some reason. We went to that 2022 bear market. I mean, Shopify has never been able to recover. And think about how expensive Shopify Shopify is today and imagine how expensive it was back here. I mean, it's it's kind of just crazy, right? And Shopify is also, you know, growing here at what, like a 20% clip. Constellation's growing at a 21% clip. They're both favorably in line for the same growth rates, but just trade at hefty premiums. Look at Adobe, right? Like Adobe, I understand. We all use Adobe products to some extent. I'm sure many of us do. And it's trading at a really high value that it hasn't been able to justify now for almost five years. Yeah, it's up 82% over the last five years, but that big spike that last happened almost five years ago, it's, it's barely justifying the value growing at a 10% clip. Because again, I think so much of the value was pulled forward, but these companies have been promising, promising us Endless AI innovations, right? Look at Oracle. Oracle's up 62% this year, 43 times multiple on a company that's only seeing revenue growth in the single digits. Like, how are we justifying this? It's the same thing I've said about Microsoft and Apple and just this endless promise. Like, look at Salesforce, another company uh, that's very software promised, again, trades at really high multiples, yet doesn't justify the high multiple growth rates. I, I, like I said, I just, I'm really starting to, to, again, reconsider the way I look at the AI market and understand that tools like this that I can use today that can justify value and save me ungodly amounts of time have, you know, exponentially, like if I could buy this software or get ownership in it, I would like yesterday. And again, the link's down in the description. I highly recommend going to try it out. But like, I can't see like Palantir software. I get that they're saving companies millions. I get there's huge growth ahead of it. But like, can you justify it at this current value or did we pull ahead 10 years, five, 10 years of value? Because everyone keeps telling me, oh, just hold it, hold it long term. It's like, you know, I could say the same thing about Tesla, but I don't want to get stuck in a lost decade of value while these companies wait because they overpromised and underdelivered growth. Again, not saying that's going to happen here. I'm like, obviously, I'm on the more bearish sentiment, but I'm always bullish because, again, I'm always investing in the S&P 500 where I'm collecting, you know, these top weighted software companies. Yeah, they might be a bit overvalued today, but I think the ebb and flow of the other half of the market, again, which is why I continue to cost average into my dividend ETFs. You really want diversity in markets like this where there's so much uncertainty into the future. Again, it offers the most stability. Dividends really help me continue to cost average in tougher markets. But when markets do well, I think tech is, again, a little overvalued, but if tech continues to perform, then, hey, I got it in the S&P, and the S&P will continue to hit all-time highs, baby. But I'll pass that question off to you. I'd love to know what you think about all of this in that comment section below.